Hi, everyone. Corey Fleck here. Another KE Report webinar featuring Labrador Gold. This webinar is produced in conjunction with Focus Communications. I am your host over at the KE Report website where we cover market commentary as well as resource stocks. Labrador Gold being one of those stocks. I am joined by Roger Moss, President and CEO of Labrador Gold. Roger has put together a presentation for us that we will be sharing here in the shortly, outlining a new project that the company is exploring, the Hopedale Project in Labrador. I guess I should say Labrador Gold is traded on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol LAB and on the OTCQX under the symbol NKOSF. Now, Roger, as I mentioned, this Hopedale project, some recent news that came out of the company at the beginning of February explained some results from the 2023 exploration program. I assume the company is going to be following up on some of this. So everyone tuning in, please, you can ask questions throughout this webinar by using the chat function within this webinar software or the question and answer function. I will be monitoring both of those and interjecting questions as Roger walks through this presentation. So Roger, thank you very much for joining us and please give us some insights on this Hopedale project. Yeah, thanks very much, Corey. It's uh, it's good to be here and uh, and talking about Hopedale. And uh, thanks to all your listeners for for tuning in and uh, getting a uh, for some probably an introduction to the Hopedale project. And uh, we've talked a lot about Kingsway. And um, but what many people probably didn't realize is that uh, even though we were we were going full out at Kingsway, we were bringing along our Hopedale project in the background as well over the last five years or so. So um, to get started, uh, here's the, the normal disclaimer. I will be making forward-looking statements in the presentation, so uh, you please be aware of that. And when we look at Labrador Gold as a company, I mean, you might say, well, why, why would I want to invest in Labrador Gold? Well, I mean, that, there, there are several reasons, which I think are, are, are very strong reasons. Um, and that is we have two very good projects, both of them in Newfoundland and Labrador. The Kingsway project, which many of you will be more familiar with, um, on, the, on the island of Newfoundland, it's in the central Newfoundland gold belt. And we've been exploring there for about three and a half years now and uh, have had several discoveries there. The Hopedale project is located up in Labrador, and it is a district scale project that covers large parts of a greenstone belt that has potential for gold, copper, and nickel. And we're also in a politically stable jurisdiction in Newfoundland and Labrador. And that uh, that government there is very supportive of mineral exploration. And so it's a, it's a jurisdiction that we're very comfortable in. We've been working there since 2017. And uh, in fact, the, 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 this iteration of Labrador gold, if you like, was uh, was started when we acquired the uh, the Hopedale project in, in 2017. Um, our exploration staff is excellent. Uh, they've done a great job both at, uh, at Kingsway and Hopedale, and uh, we've certainly advanced uh, both projects uh, over the last few years to uh, to a significant degree. And our shareholders, uh, including perhaps some of you, uh, we're very grateful for for supporting us in this in this journey. And joining us in the journey and um, right now we we have about seven million dollars in cash no debt um, and I think that's a that's a, a good position to be in right now knowing that uh, that money is money is hard to come by and uh, financings are getting done but they tend to be small and uh, we're very fortunate to have that uh, that cash in the bank Okay, so 
This is a look at the share breakdown. Um, we have about 170 million shares out. Uh, we traded last, I think, uh, closed yesterday at 12 and a half cents. So that puts us at a market cap of just over 21 million. Uh, we have a few options, fully diluted, so we're 177 million. And I mentioned the cash. Um, Eric Sprott is our largest shareholder at 10.7%. We also have uh, large shareholders in Palisades Gold Corp uh, at about 6%. Newfound Gold, our, our neighbors at, at Kingsway, uh, have 7.5%, and Crestcat Capital about nine and a half percent. So um, some some significant uh, major shareholders there who have been very supportive over the over the last few years. Um, Hopedale is, uh, as I said, we've been working on Hopedale over the years in the background um, while we while we've been focused on on Kingsway. But we we really started in in 2017. Um, when we acquired the project from uh, prospector Sean Ryan, who many of you may know, and uh, that's when we that's when we started with just some initial reconnaissance um, sampling, soil and lake sediment sampling, and uh, that was just a very quick end of season uh, exploration program to see what uh, what was there at at Hopedale. We got some really good uh, anomalies in both the soils and the lake sediments. And so we followed it up uh, in 2018 with a with a much more significant uh, program of soil sampling. We took on the order of about 12,000 soil samples over the length of the Queenstone Belt, um, as well as prospecting and mapping. We also did some ground geophysics work, uh, MAG VLF, and uh, so the results of that work ended up with a um, a three kilometer trend of gold um, in what we call the 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 Thurber, the Thurber license and uh, that trend is outlined by both uh, gold in rock and in soil samples and uh, it's a it's a pretty significant trend that we'll see uh, we'll see shortly in 2019 we went back and we did uh, quite a bit more work and uh, that uh, the result of some of that work was the discovery of of the TD500 occurrence. When we arrived in 2017, there was only one gold occurrence known at Hopedale. And uh, as you'll see, we found a few more uh, in addition to TD500. And um, and we've also found some other uh, some other occurrences of copper and nickel. Um, the copper at CapEc we found in 2022, and uh, nickel nickel uh, occurrences we found. We, we, we had some indications in 2022, but it was really last year that we followed up on those indications and, and outlined some significant uh, anomalies at, uh, at what we call Rusty Ridge and, and Last Resort. So Roger, was there any work done even before uh, Labrador Gold as a company took over this project? Yeah, the the um, the so the the Hopedale project covers the large part a large part of the um, the Florence Lake Greenstone Belt, and uh, it had had work dating back mostly to the nineties, eighties, and nineties. And um, in the 90s, after the um, after the discovery of Voices Bay, uh, which you can see here on this on this map uh, further to the north from Hopedale, um, there was a there was a bit of uh, exploration for nickel um, associated with the ultramafic rocks at Hopedale, and uh, later in the um, in the later 90s, there was also some exploration off and on fairly sporadic for for gold but not uh not really uh not really ongoing so um so yeah it's when 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 we arrived there um and, and one of the reasons i've always liked this project is that it is a greenstone belt we own most of it and um and it hasn't had uh, much much work um done it's certainly in consideration or comparison with uh, greenstone belts else, elsewhere in the world. Okay, thank you. So this is just uh, where it is. Uh, you can see it. Uh, you can see it here in the middle of the map. It's uh, 
it looks like it's in the middle of nowhere, but uh, in fact, they're, they're, it's, it's not as bad as it looks because it's, it's actually on tidewater. So there is, a, there is a fjord or a bay that comes in from the Atlantic Ocean up at the community of Hopedale, and uh, that runs along the eastern, eastern side of the, uh, of the Greenstone Belt. So uh, that's very useful in terms of, uh, in, in terms of logistics. And then there is um, a daily, daily air service from Happy Valley Goose Bay to uh, to the to the Hopedale community. So it's uh, it is it is up there, but it's not quite as remote as uh, as it seems on uh, just just looking at the map there. What about other projects, other assets in and around the area, or any other activity in terms of exploration or development? Yeah, there's quite a there's quite a bit of activity um, which is also being uh, sort of going on and off for um, for uranium. Uh, there's also nickel activity in the area. Uh, in fact, uh, just just uh, west of west of our property and down to the south, there are some uh, there's there, there's some nickel exploration ongoing. So um, there yeah there there's there's more work being done up there, and I think. Uh, I think over the last couple of years, especially, that's picked up um, both with um, with the the uranium and with the critical metals, copper, copper and nickel. Yeah, that's been a big shift for the market, hasn't it? It has, yeah, yeah. So this this is what it looks like: um, the Florence Fro- <laughs> the Florence Lake Greenstone Belt is uh, is shown here in in the the geology, the the different colors, and it's typical. Typical greenstone belt geology you have ultramafic rocks. You have mafic rocks, uh, mafic rocks in green, ultramafic rocks in purple. You can see some of the felsic, uh, felsic volcanic rocks in uh, in yellow, and then the pinks, the pinks and oranges around are, are various types of uh, of, of granitoids or, or gneisses. So um, very similar to what we see um, elsewhere in the world. Um, in terms of uh, in terms of greenstone belts, um, the five licenses are outlined here, starting at the top. This is the one we call the Thurba license, and then working our way down to the bottom. Um, that covers about a 40, 45 kilometer, forty three kilometer strike length of the uh, of of the greenstone belt. So, uh, as you can see, most of it is covered by these uh, these these licenses. Um, I mentioned that it's 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 relatively underexplored. And uh, I think we've shown in the past, uh, in in the past over the past five years, that uh, there's good potential there for uh, for copper, nickel, and zinc, uh, in addition to the gold that we were uh, initially attracted to. And uh, what we do know when we look at greenstone belts elsewhere in the world is that they tend to be uh, prolific hosts of gold mineralization. Are you usually seeing mineralization close to surface, or are these typically deeper systems? Well, the, I mean, the the origin of the of these kind of orogenic golds, they, gold systems, they tend to be deep, but um, uh, they are exposed at surface. Now, we haven't done any drilling here yet, so everything that you'll see today is is basically uh, mineralization at surface. Oh, there are already questions about when it will be drill ready, so I'm sure we'll get to that later. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so going going on with the uh, with with the greenstone belts, uh, this is just a slide I put together as a comparison slide. Um, everybody likes to see what uh, you know what might be, and um, this is uh, this is the Florence Lake greenstone belt down here in the in the uh, in the bottom bottom right. And uh, the other the other blobs on the on the diagram are the 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 footprints at the same scale as as I did the Florence Lake Greenstone Belt of some of the major gold camps in Ontario, and you'll be familiar with many of these: Timmins, um, the T K L Kirkland Lake, L L Lotta Lake, and R L Red Lake. And underneath there, you can see how many ounces of gold have been produced. Uh, from these gold camps, this is this would be a minimum because you can see um, in the sources down below that uh, the the sources that I used for 
for putting together these these footprints is 2012 and 1983 and 1993 for Florence Lake, but the there haven't been any any gold produced at Florence Lake yet, um, but it just gives you a sense of like this is this is a gold uh, a, a gold rich system in these or a gold rich environment in in that we see in the Abitibi and up at Red Lake. Um, so what's the possibility at, at Florence Lake? And that's one of the things that's always attracted me to this uh, to this project right from the word go. Roger, why, why is this greenstone belt so underexplored? We can see the millions of ounces in these other greenstone belts, nothing in Florence Lake. Yeah, I think partly it's because of its its relative remote remoteness. Um, it is uh, the the work that we do up there is helicopter supported, so uh, it's not uh, there's no road access, for example. Um, so I think I think that's part of it. Um, the other part of it is that uh, this. The Florence Lake Greenstone Belt is slightly older than uh, the Greenstone Belts in Ontario, certainly the Abitibi. So um, that may be that may be part of it. But um, when we when we're on the ground and uh, looking at the rocks, that's uh, they're they're very similar, very similar lithologies to what we see in these other Greenstone Belts. So then, what what are you targeting though? Those are greenstone belts. You're also looking for critical minerals, so it's a kind of mixed bag that you're targeting. Well, yeah, I, Corey. The 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 thing about greenstone belts is that um, they 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 are they 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 are very prolific hosts of gold, but they're also hosts to nickel nickel deposits, uh, typically in uh in ultramafic volcanic rocks that we call commodities and those are the ones that we see at uh, at hopedale as well and also volcanogenic massive sulfides one of, one of the largest uh vms deposits in the world uh kid creek is uh is in the abitibi uh up near timmins so um yeah they they are prolific hosts of gold but uh also there there's there's a lot of potential for other metals uh, in these in these uh, greenstone belts as well. All right. Well, thanks, Roger. Let's get into the Hopedale project then. <laughs> yeah. So this is this is where we're at now. I like like I said, we've been working here five years, and it's it's been kind of a slow uh, a, a slow roll um, over the years. Obviously, 2020 and 2021, we didn't get up there to do any work because of COVID. Um, and uh, it's really only now that we're starting to get uh, into the meat of things, uh, especially with the gold, um, the the um, nickel, nickel and copper are relatively new uh, new uh, endeavors for us. Um, but that they're, they're coming along nicely as well. So, um, what what have we done um, since since we started here? We found um, eight eight occurrences. There was one, as I mentioned earlier, um, that was already known at, uh, at at Hopedale, and that was the Thurber Dog occurrence, and that's uh, that's up in the north, the north northern part, top top of this slide. And while we were doing the um, the the soil sampling and, and and rock sampling, we also saw we we also started to find more um, occurrences around Thurber Dog. And uh, we we called them Thurber North and Thurber South, very original. And um, but but probably the best one we found in uh, in 20, 2019, and uh, we only took three samples of it at that point. But uh, it it has turned out to be uh, to be a really nice occurrence and probably the the prime candidate for drilling, uh, and that's the TD five hundred um, occurrence up there in the middle middle of the North Block. So um, those those are some of the gold occurrences. Mostly, mostly uh, all of them occurred in that north north block, except for one, um, which was a really nice uh, sample that we got last last year down at what's called the fire ant uh, occurrence, and um, that one had over 100 grams a ton of uh, of gold and about 20 20 grams a ton silver in a grab sample from from that outcrop. So, uh, so that was that was nice to see, and that's down in the bottom, the 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 um, down in the bottom of this slide, the bottom bottom left, 
And uh, you can also see down there Rusty Ridge and Last Resort. Um, we'll get into them in a little more detail in a minute, but uh, they're, they're where we saw the, the best nickel, the nickel values in both, um, in, in both soils and, and rock samples. So we're looking at potentially um, nickel associated with ultramafic volcanics down there and as well as that uh, that fire ant gold occurrence. So, Roger, let's keep it there just for one second because a question came in that did say, look, eight occurrences are within two license areas. It, we see it's up on the north, down in the south. What about these other license areas? Were you doing work there and just not finding many occurrences, or do you just need to spend some more time on these other licenses? <laughs> yeah, it's... it's uh... We, we have done work there and you can see the other licenses. Um, they are, they are, they're also lit up. Um, so for example, we, here we have Jasmine, um, in the, in the, uh, the second license down and, uh, we, we see quite a lot of zinc there. There's also a little bit of gold, uh, misery, the next one down full of, full of pink dots, which is basically gold in, in, in soil. Um, so, good gold and soil anomalies there. And uh, it also has some nickel and cobalt, which we haven't followed up on at all. And then uh, as you go down, there are some, a few other occurrences, the starship, which is, uh, has gold and soil in soil anomalies, but we really haven't done enough work at these other um, anomalous areas to, to kind of justify um justify giving them a, a an occurrence name really okay so right now the focus then being on the occurrences that you have found the higher grade ones in the north and it looks like down in the south yeah and I, you know I, as as one of your listeners was asking like when are we going to drill it so i mean that's that's ultimately the goal is to is to get some of these uh, occurrences to the point where they can be drilled and i think that uh, you know Obviously, getting a drill up there, even though we are on tide water, is is not easy. Um, when you when you get the drill up there, you want to have a significant program, so you want to have good targets. You want to have enough targets to justify a, a significant program. So um, so we're really focused on on upgrading the the more advanced occurrences, if you like, like TD five hundred to uh, to to good drill targets. Okay, thank you. Yep. So now we're now we're going to zoom in a little bit. This is uh, this is Thurba. The we call it the Thurba license because that's where the Thurba dog uh, occurrence uh, occurrence was when we first arrived, and it gives you a little bit better sense of the of the geology. Um, and it's probably the best way to look at it is this there's this purple stripe uh, coming up through the center next to the lake, and those are the ultramafics. Um, so that's sort of the, the, the direction of the stratigraphy. It's almost north-south, and you can see it bending up to the northeast, up in, up in the north. And it's along that contact with the ultramafics and, and the mafics that we tend to see these gold occurrences occurring. So it's, it's fairly, fairly predictable um, in where we see it. And... Uh, this this particular diagram only shows rocks, uh, rock samples. But if we added the soil samples to this, you'd see the whole that whole contact light up um, with uh, with gold rich soils as well. So um, so these are the occurrences. Uh, as I mentioned, we got uh, Thurber North and Thurber South, um, 3.8, 4.1 grams. Uh, TD 500, our best uh, occurrence so far at uh, just under 22 grams and Thurbodog just over 11 grams a ton. So uh, significant values and um, more, more to come from there, I'm sure. We've also, um, we also had a look a couple of years ago. Um, I think it's probably three years ago now. Uh, we, we found this uh, copper silver occurrence at, uh, to, the, to the south called Capac. And... Um, we got up to 10.2% copper and 9.2 grams a ton silver in, in rock samples. So that was, that was pretty interesting. And uh, what we did uh, in 2022 was we went back and we did some channel sampling in this area, which channel sampled TD500, 
Uh, you can see what it looks like here. This is stripped off and it's pretty much gossamous, the whole area. Um, this, the, the, the inset photograph there. And then to just to the left of the inset photograph, you can see the map of uh, where we took the took some of the uh, the channels. That's the best area um, of uh, of values that we got. Further to the north, um, we didn't get as good values up there. But uh, the so some of the values that we got in the southern part there were 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 really good. Uh, Seven point two grams over just under two meters almost three grams over five um and you can you can see the uh you can see the assays there 4.2 over five meters so um some significant uh some significant intervals there right at surface and uh this is probably the number one um target for drilling uh at some point so how much more work needs to be done at td 500 then you've got the surface samples you've shown high grade what more do you do before you get a drill there? Uh, some some geophysics. Uh, we 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 probably want to want to look at uh, at some IP uh, potentially looking at the at the resistivity uh, below below surface so that uh, that'll guide the drilling. But uh, I think we're close. I think uh, we may be able to squeeze it in this year, but uh, certainly we want to go up and do some geophysics this year. And um, and refine refine the targets here as well as down in the south at uh, at Rusty Ridge. Okay, as you said, build up a handful of targets before you get on the ground. Yeah, just to make it worthwhile, because I mean the mobilization costs of getting the drill up there is going to be significant. So uh, it I, I don't really think it's worth going in there for like five drill hole program for a thousand meters or something like that. Yep. No, makes sense. All right, let's hear about more targets then. <laughs> this is uh this is capac the one just to for a little bit further south at, at on the top license um we this is the one where we got the 10 the the 10 percent copper obviously in the uh channel sampling we didn't get as uh as good uh as as good assays but uh but we still got up to three three point three percent and uh several over one one percent um, the the knock on this one is that it, the the widths are a little uh, a little lean in some places, um, but they do get up to a meter and a half. But um, that's something that uh, is still more of a curiosity than a drill target at this point. I think um, it needs more work to figure out uh, if that's all there is, and in terms of width, or whether we can actually uh, w w whether we can actually see. Um, wider wider intervals of of similar kinds of copper grades okay so that's earlier stage yeah so fire ant was a um w w was a uh an occurrence that we found last year as i mentioned and uh it's it's very close to rusty ridge so this is uh this is the now down in the south the southernmost license um that we talked about and uh fire ant yeah 100, over 100 grams a ton with uh, 20 grams of silver, um, we've only got two or three samples from this uh, from this area, um, so we're not we're not sure what's happening there yet. But it, again, it's it seems to be very close to the uh, to the contact with ultramafic rocks, and and in this case, um, it seems to be hosted by by felsic volcanic rocks. And there's a piece of the um, piece of the sample there. In, in the uh, inset photo, and you can see that it's very, very rusty, very gossamous, and um, a good, good looking rock. Um, so that's, that's next to Rusty Ridge, which I think is the, our, next, uh, our next slide, Rusty Ridge and Last Resort. So back in 2022, we did, a, we did a very brief reconnaissance at Rusty Ridge and took some samples there and because uh, we we had noticed that there'd been a few soil samples that that showed nickel, and um, we followed that up with uh, with more sampling, uh, rock sampling primarily. I don't think we did any soil samples in 2022. So prospecting to see if we could find any good-looking nickel nickel bearing rock, um, we we found a little a little more, but uh, it wasn't really until last year 
that we spent uh, a good portion of the um, of, of our program down in this area at uh, at Rusty Ridge and Last Resort, and uh, you can see here the again the 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 pink dots are soil samples, and they are um, they're the above 97.5 percentile, which means that they're very anomalous. And um, so there's a lot of them there. And in fact, you, you can see in, in, some, uh, in some of the uh, soil samples at Rusty Ridge, we got up to 0.23% nickel in the soil sample. So um, there's, there's something going on here. It's a very, very anomalous nickel area. Um, the the rock samples are certainly anomalous, um, but they're not uh, they're not way way higher than that that one in the, in the soil sample. And it, part of the reason for that may be that uh, these gossamers these gossamers uh, rocks can uh, actually be leached of some of the nickel that's 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 in there. And so they may not uh, they may not show as much as uh, the fresh the fresh surface below, and uh, that's something that was um, I think came out of the discovery of Voises Bay, um, where many people have walked over and sampled the discovery outcrop, but uh, but it was only the two prospectors that made the discovery that actually uh, that actually got down to the fresh rock and sampled it. And uh, and and found the significant nickel. So maybe that's playing out here. Maybe not. But uh, it's certainly something that we're going to look at. Uh, we're going to look at this year. And uh, the other thing, the other thing about these um, these anomalies, and especially last resort down in the bottom here, is that uh, you can see those those soil samples are uh, are very very nicely lined up along that uh, that magnetic high in, in pink, um, in the pink, it's like a pink finger uh, stuck in the middle of a sea of blue. And uh, that's, that, that's really exciting because it, that, that would indicate that there's something, there's something there. And um, again, this is an area that we need to focus on this year um, with some geophysics and uh, see if we can actually outline outline some uh, some drill targets okay and this is this is what it looks like so this is uh, this is a shot from the air of rusty Ridge uh, both of them uh, rusty Ridge this uh, this one this one on the top the top left is looking towards the north and uh, the one the one on the bottom right is looking towards the east. And it wow. just gives you two uh, two two shots, and it and it it, uh, it indicates why we actually call it Rusty Ridge because it is very rusty, and it is a ridge. Yeah, I think we can all see that. That's a <laughs> very applicable name to this. Right. Um, and okay, so just just to wrap it up, this is um, you know we think there's great potential for gold and nickel and copper at uh, at Hopedale. We found. Uh, there, there are nine occurrences known. We've actually only found eight of them, um, but uh, still, uh, lots, lots there, and uh, we think that there's a lot more potential for further discovery in that in that three-kilometer gold-rich trend, um, as well as at Lost Resort and Rusty Ridge, where we have a, a, a large area of anomalous gold. Uh, sorry, anomalous nickel in uh in soils and grab samples so i think uh rusty ridge last resort and uh that that three kilometer trend are areas that we're going to focus on this year and uh we've got uh we've got plenty of cash to uh to to carry out our our drill program uh sorry no i shouldn't say drill program oh that no was... <laughs> drill program yet, right, Roger? That you're that... still targeting, you're building up <laughs> targets for a drill program. That, that, that was a slip. I, yeah. I, 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 you can tell I want to drill it, but... Um... <laughs> not yet. Not, not yet. That's what a number of people were asking. So more <laughs> targeting. You said maybe drilling by the end of the year, correct? Yeah. The, so another another issue um, working up in Labrador, of course, is a short uh, field season. Uh, we're really looking at... Uh, 
from early July to, I mean, you can go, you can go into October, but the, the longer you go, the less, uh, the, the more weather dependent it is. And uh, it can get pretty nasty in October. So um, really you got, you got beginning of July to end of September is sort of prime, prime ex exploration time. Okay, Roger, we, we've had a number of questions come in. Thank you everyone for sending in your questions. You can still get a couple more in if you type them in the platform right now. Uh, one early on question is, is the company now pivoting away from the Kingsway project in Newfoundland? That's where you did a lot of the drilling over the last couple of years, but you are clearly moving forward this Hopedale project too. Are you at least, let's say this year in the near term, switching a bit more of your focus? Uh, no, I think uh, Kingsway is still our, our flagship pro project. Um, we've got a lot, a lot going on at Kingsway. Um, found a lot, found a lot there, and uh, you know, it's it's kind of. Um, I'm very happy to have two really good projects, and uh, but uh, I think I think Kingsway is far more advanced than Hopedale. But uh, what I, what I want to do is to show both our shareholders and others that uh, you know what what potential there is at Hopedale and so that uh, so that this is also taken into account and we as, as I mentioned we've we've really kind of just brought it along slowly in the background we haven't spent too much money on it and uh, I, I will give a shout out again to the Newfoundland government that uh, you know they've been very good at uh, at supporting us in our exploration efforts, both at Kingsway and Hopedale. And um, this past year, they introduced a new uh, critical metals uh, uh, grant, and uh, so so we're we're getting we're getting some money for uh, for the work that we did up there um, last year. And uh, so no, I mean Kingsway is is still the number one project, but uh, I also like Copedale. Okay. Uh, now, when it comes to uh, these primary targets and when you get drilling here, how do you prioritize gold compared to some of the critical minerals? Because we saw a lot of surface samples of high-grade gold, but you also mixed in some nickel and other results there. So what is the priority to go after in terms of targeting? Well, I think I think the priorities are really, I, I, at least in my mind, they are based on the what we're able to to generate as as a drill target. And as, as I mentioned, I think right now TD five hundred is is our best drill target. Uh, we have we have gold at surface. We have gold over significant widths in the channel samples. And uh, we we have some geophysics there. I'd like to do some more. Um, and with that in hand, I think we can we can plan a decent drill program. Um, Rusty Ridge and and Last Resort are a little bit further behind. Um, I'd like to do some detailed geophysics over those over those soil grids, and uh, and also um, perhaps try and get some samples from. Uh, of of the fresh of the fresh ultramafic rocks below the Gossner surface um, before we go and drill there. As to which which we drill, um, like I said, if if I have a drill up at the Hopedale project, I'll drill whatever whatever is ready to be drilled, whether it's gold, nickel, copper, um, whichever one's ready, I'll I'll drill them all. Okay, fair enough. Good on you. Why not? Right? If you have a good target, go out there and drill it. I'm sure. A lot of investors would like to see some of these targets drilled, but before you get drilling, exploration in terms of further isolating these targets, you said geophysics, some more surface work. Are you going to be doing more surface sampling? And what sort of news out of that more, I guess, targeting exploration work that's going to happen this year can we expect? Well, yeah, unfortunately, with the the, the way it, uh, it works at Hopedale, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be up there for a month or two. We'll be doing the work. There won't be, there won't be much news and the news will basically come all at once because that's when we'll be, be getting the results back from the lab. So, um, 
So this, the, it's not like at Kingsway where we have a, a more a, a steadier a, a steadier flow of news from drill results. Um, at Hopedale, it's uh, it, it's not going to be quite as uh, quite as steady. Okay. Now, now you're not doing this targeting to potentially JV this project or any areas, are you? Uh, it has occurred to me that 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 might be a good idea. Um, okay. Certainly, certainly, if we if we were approached by uh, a company that uh, that had the ability to take it on, um, we would we would be open to an offer. But um, at the moment, nothing nothing has uh, has come our way. But um, but who knows? That might happen. Okay. Now, now, what about the total size of this Hopedale project? Somebody's asking just for a quick recap on total size compared to just the strike lengths that you have of some of the targets you're working up. Yeah, well, I think uh, the, the entire Greenstone Belt, as I mentioned, it's about 40, 43 kilometers that we have covered with our licenses. Um, the Greenstone Belt itself is about 60, 60 kilometers, I think. So, uh, so we have uh, about two, about 60, 66 percent, or whatever, two thirds of it. Um, of that, um, the the two licenses, the one in the north and one in the south, are the ones where we, we, we where we've really uh, developed developed the uh, occurrences. And then there's the three the three in the middle that are have signs of of gold and nickel cobalt. But we haven't brought them along to the same degree as we have uh, the other ones. So, you know, of that, of that, say forty-three kilometers, we're probably looking at about maybe ten kilometers that have uh, significant significant occurrences. Okay. So, as at this current stage, and I realize stuff can change. Some people are wondering how you would go about ranking these targets. It sounds like that TD 500 is at the top of the pecking order, but what follows it? Can you give us a general outline there? It's tough. Um, like I think TD 500 is, is definitely number one. Um, and then one of, one of the things that we, we see is, as I mentioned, we have that three kilometer trend. So if we're drilling a TD500, we're gonna we're gonna continue to step out to the north and south along for, away from it. Um, so that's that's sort of going to happen. TD500, by the way, um, is stands for Thurbadog 500. So because it's 500 meters away from Thurbadog, which is the other which is the other occurrence, and so there's 500 meters in between there. Um, is Thurbadog, Thurbadog's a potential candidate. Um, but, you know, like I say, I re I would really like to get as many targets as we can, um, in order to drill because it's, we, we can't just drive the drill up and start drilling and drill, do like a, a thousand meter drill program. Um, it, that, that doesn't make sense economically. Um, so. I know I'm waffling a bit here, but so I'll try. I'll try, I'll try again. TD500 would be my number one. I would, because the drill is up there on the northern license. I would also like to drill uh, Cerberdog, and I would like to drill uh, Capac, the copper, the copper occurrence. Assuming that we can we can demonstrate that there's there's potential for more more than 1.5 meter widths. So that that would be one group. Right, so let's say those are the the first three priorities because they're all in the same area of the property. Then we have to go way the hell down to the south and uh, look at the look at the nickel and and also the the fire ant gold occurrence. Um, so those would probably be fourth fourth and and lower priorities if we if we if we say that the the ones up at Thurber are the uh, are the top three. Okay, that's fair though. It seems like the northern licenses then are more of the focus because you have a number of targets already kind of in that area. When you say that you want 
a number of targets before actually starting drilling. Is there a number around that? Is that a minimum of five, a minimum of 10, or is it a minimum of three? Any clarity on that? The it's not it's not so much a, a number of targets it's, it's it's how many how many meters of drilling that we would want to do and uh because i think you know as as i mentioned uh, a 1000 2000 meter drill program um the cost the cost of mobilization and demobilization of the drill is going to is going to drive that cost way up so you know i'd like to see i'd like to see targets that would benefit from at least 5,000 meters, maybe even 10,000 meters um, before committing, because then that that then the economics work a little better. Okay. Uh, since we're talking about that, then uh, how much would it cost to drill Hopedale? I understand it sounds like startup costs are kind of the key kicker here, but can you put a number around what drill costs would be? uh no I, I this is something that i'm i'm looking into right now but i don't have uh so i i've i've been trying to get a hold of the drill our driller at um at kingsway because i know that he has uh he does have rigs up in labrador um but i haven't uh i haven't managed to get him to uh i mean not even commit but to uh to give me some kind of idea of what the costs are up there um because i think he has i think he has three rigs up there right now so he would have a he would have a very good idea um so unfortunately right now i don't know um our cost our all-in cost at kingsway is is about 280 dollars a meter and uh all in that means geology trucks accommodation assays the whole works right um i would expect well i shouldn't i shouldn't really it, it'll, no, it'll be, fair enough. Don't get yourself in trouble here. It's too it, early, maybe, to say. It'll be significantly more than that up at Labrador, though. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Roger, when was the last time you raised money? Because with $7 million in, in cash still on hand, look, that, that's a healthy amount for an exploration company in this market. Yeah, well, we were, we were really, really fortunate that... Uh, so the short answer is um, 2021. And uh, it's uh, oh no wait no sorry 2022 and um, no it was 2021 <laughs> and uh, we were very fortunate in that um, the the uh, the gold rush at Kingsway helped us quite a lot and uh, we we managed to raise um, in uh, 2020 2021 probably about 35 million. So uh, that's, that's really why we still have uh, this money, money on hand. And it's, uh, it's, it's a great, great spot to be in. Yeah. Oh, well, it's a unique spot to be in. We know a lot of companies out there that have had a lot of trouble raising money recently. And quite frankly, are just raising money to keep the lights on. So Roger, we've been through a lot of questions here. Thank you for taking us through this Hopedale project. I'll give you one last little closing remark here. In terms of investors looking at Labrador Gold, you do have the two projects, right? Hopedale that you're continuing on with targeting, as well as the Kingsway project. So overall, value proposition, please. Yeah, I think, well, you know, obviously Kingsway, like I said, still a, still a flagship pro project. It's, uh, it's a long strike and along the same structure as Newfound Gold. Um, we haven't had the incredible assays that you found gold have come out with, and they came out with some more today, I know. Um, and, uh, I don't know why that is, but, uh, it's, uh, I, I find it hard to believe that the geology and, and structures change at, at the claim boundary, but, um, there it is. Um, so I'm, I'm confident that there's more to be found at Kingsway and, uh, but I don't want to. You know, I, I think part of the part of the reason for showing the the Hopedale and what what the potential is at Hopedale is that I don't want people to think of us as a one trick pony, and um, so there is a lot of potential at, at Hopedale. And um, you know, when you look at 
Hopedale in comparison to Greenstone Belts elsewhere in the world, it's there. There, there seems like a lot of potential there that has gone unrealized, and uh, perhaps we're just literally scratching the surface right now. Okay, Roger. Thank you very much for this webinar update. If anyone has follow up questions, you can always email me directly. My email is fleck, F-L-E-C-K, at kereport.com. I'll follow up with Rogers. We get some more news throughout this year and also to address any questions that you have sent in. Roger, thank you for your time. Everybody who tuned in, thank you for tuning in and thank you for sending in your questions. Thank you very much, Corey. And uh, yeah, thanks for everybody listening. Thank you.